Last week, Bungie gave us a little preview of some of the changes they were making to both exotic armor and the ability sandbox in Season 22. Today, Bungie gave us a preview of what they're doing to exotic weapons and weapon perks in Season 22. There's a lot to go over, but I'm going to try to give you the info on everything in the article and a few thoughts on some of the changes as well. But real quick, today's video is brought to you by Factor. Let's thank them real quick. Too busy with your end of summer goals to cook, but want to make sure you're eating well? With Factor, skip the extra trip to the grocery store and the extra work in the kitchen while still getting the flavor and nutritional quality that you need. Factor's fresh, never frozen meals are ready in just two minutes, so all you have to do is just heat them up and enjoy. Ever since I did my first promo for Factor on this channel a long time ago, I still routinely order their meals, no joke. This week I've got one of my favorites, cheesy chicken pimento pasta. We usually do four meals per week, two for me and two for Anno. You could do more if you want, I just really enjoy the fact that two nights out of the week, neither of us have to do any cooking. We we just heat the meals, eat them and relax together with no prep work and minimal cleanup. If you're too busy running around during the day to think about lunch, Factor's got lunch to go. No effort, wholesome meals like grain bowls and salad toppers that are ready to eat whenever, no heating up required. With options like dietitian approved calorie smart meals or protein plus meals with 30 grams of protein or more per serving, you're sure to find something to fit your needs and goals. Head over to factor75.com or click the link in the pinned comment and use code FALLOUT 50 to get a whopping 50% off your first factor box. Hell of a deal right there. Again, that is 50% off with code fallout50. Thank you, factor. All right, on to the weapon changes. First up, something that'll probably make a lot of diehard PvE players a little upset, a nerf to double special loadouts. If you didn't know, rocking two special weapons instead of one special and one primary currently makes it so that more heavy ammo will drop from enemies. While Bungie admittedly found that kind of interesting, they can't have shit like that going on apparently because there's basically no downside to doing it and primary weapons were feeling alone and ignored like you were on prom night. PvE kills with double special equipped will now generate heavy ammo at the same rate as two primaries or one primary and one special. If you care about reticles, Bungie mentions that they're going to try to keep improving how much info reticles give you in game via changes like adding a perk active indicator to symmetry and moving Grand Overture's charge meters so that it doesn't overlap with other stuff. One of the big things coming in season 22, at least big from a weapon geek like me's perspective, the change is coming to zoom and damage fall off. The goals there were to reduce the variance between optimal engagement ranges of mid range weapons and to slightly reduce the average engagement range in PVP by pulling in the maximum damage fall off distance of a lot of weapons. Quick warning, Bungie goes into a lot of technical jargon with charts and tables in this section. And if you're easily intimidated by numbers, you may want to be warned if you go and read this article by yourself. But the TLDR from Bungie is that once you hit your weapons damage fall off point in season 22, you're probably going to feel it much more noticeably right away. Rifle style weapons will experience damage fall off more gradually, while handheld ones will experience it more quickly. A small list of exotics and all special weapons have been hand tuned by Bungie because they don't want them to feel wildly different in season 22. Damage fall off has also been completely decoupled from zoom in season 22. And before you decide to go through your vault and throw every rangefinder weapon you have onto a big bonfire, remember, zoom is still going to increase weapon accuracy and aim assist fall off distance. Translation, your rangefinder and higher zoom weapons should feel slightly more accurate and slightly more sticky than non rangefinder weapons. Again, zoom is only getting decoupled from damage fall off, so rangefinder still should be a good weapon perk for PvP. Bungie goes on to say that because range is more easily acquired on a gun than zoom, these changes will allow more weapons to get closer to the new maximum values that were previously only achievable with high base zoom or rangefinder. Rebalance the base damage falloff start on several weapon archetypes to account for the new ADS damage falloff scalar values. Again, keep your eye on auto rifle performance going into season 22. They might be really hot. Special weapons have a chart here with minor changes as well, but again, according to Bungie, the changes made to specials should not feel significantly different in Season 22. If any of them feel way off base, I will try to let you know right away after some hands-on testing. Bungie shares a short list of exotics that had their ranges custom tuned. Again, like special weapons, these exotics probably won't feel wildly different in Season 22. The slight nerf to both Ace of Spades and Devil's Ruin is interesting though. Take 
note if you main either of those weapons. Now, moving on to other weapon changes outside of the whole damage fall off thing. Hand cannons. Bungie wants to make them feel better in PvE because they're currently outclassed by a lot of things. They're upping hand cannon reload speed, improving damage to miners by a bit, and to majors by a lot. Also, if you didn't hear, Warden's Law is returning as the first member of a new hand cannon subfamily called Heavy Burst, which will fire a two round burst. Bows have had trouble feeling good at longer ranges due to a problem with velocity that was preventing them from registering as a hit scan. Bungie has improved the base velocity of precision bows and brought lightweight bows up to match, which has quote, done wonders for how they feel at a distance. That is actually notable because up until right now in D2, 99% of all bow mains that I talk to are in agreement that lightweight bows feel like complete ass to use. This change might actually be a big deal for lightweight bows, something to keep in mind. Regarding SMGs, Bungie has finally realized that this weapon type is way too overused and strong in the current sandbox and is completely gutting the weapon type. <laughs> now I'm just with you. They're only adjusting a visual bug that was displaying the wrong rate of fire. Although the hope is that with the previously mentioned damage fall off and zoom changes, SMGs going hog wild, aka god roll rangefinder immortals will go down in usage. Here's hoping, anyway. Aggressive sidearms are getting a base damage reduction. Reason being, when Bungie was internally testing the new range value system, they learned ag frame sidearms were just way too forgiving. Easy enough to understand, I guess. Somebody pinged Drewski because the only the pulse rifle change is that the BXR battler has had its zoom value bumped back up to 20. Apparently with the new changes, the recent zoom nerf just didn't feel right, so they undid it. Or shotguns, the impact stat on the comedian was displaying incorrectly. I can only imagine that this had gone unreported for a comically long time because no one cares about or ever uses the comedian as it is a joke. Comedy, puns, all right, moving on. Fusion rifles are getting an interesting change. Fixed an issue where Adept Masterworks and enhanced intrinsic perks were decreasing the damage dealt by fusions when they changed the charge time stat. I think this means that in season 22, I can finally put an adept charge time mod on my adept plug one and not alter the damage per bolt, like at all. Again, really interesting change might actually tempt people to put an adept charge time masterwork on their adept fusion rifles for once. Keep your eye on that, could be important. Wave frame heavy grenade launchers can too often result in you killing yourself, so Bungie's making you feel better by changing the size and damage of the self-damage AoE. You can safely shoot it closer to your feet now. Swords are getting a whole bunch of changes. Energy now recharges after a short delay when used, but recharges much faster. Sword Guard DR is being massively increased and now provides between 82.5 and 95% damage reduction depending on the Guard Resist stat. Don't worry though, that number is being sharply reduced against other players in PvP. Sword Guard no longer loses energy when taking damage. Sword Guard duration has increased across every guard type, with those with the shortest durations benefiting the most. Sword Guard talent nodes have had their stats squished down. Sword Guard talent nodes now visually affect the charge rate bar on the inspection screen when hovered or selected, similar to other stat affecting nodes. Overall, a lot of changes to guarding, which will hopefully make it more worthwhile. But wait, there's more. Full power heavy Heavy attacks with a sword can now be used with any non-zero amount of sword energy rather than requiring full energy. That alone is a big, big change. Sword movement speed while blocking has also gone up a wee bit. The exotic sword Lament will not have its charge rate and delay affected, but it will benefit from the increased guard damage reduction and duration. I'm not gonna lie, all of these sword changes sound really spicy on paper, and I wouldn't be surprised if it resulted in a lot more PvE usage in season 22. Now we move on to exotic weapon changes, and we're leading off with a wild one. After years of Monte Carlo having a long sick blade attached right to the weapon with zero function, Bungie has finally decided to let us use it. The fabled most complex catalyst Bungie has ever made that they've been teasing is officially, as many people predicted, tied to Monte Carlo. To be completely honest, I was really looking forward to it maybe being Thorn, but honestly, this is just as good. Quicksilver Storm fixed an issue where ammo was loading into Quicksilver Storm slightly too late in the reload animation. I'm not sure if that is talking about the default reload 
reload speed or the grenade animation speed. Feels like a good time to mention though that there's currently a trick to reloading the grenade launcher part of Quicksilver a little bit faster. After firing a grenade in grenade launcher mode, quickly mash the reload button right after and you'll reload your next shot way, way quicker. If you let the Quicksilver auto load the next grenade shot without doing this, it'll take forever and it makes me want to die. And if Bungie isn't talking about that here, and I think they aren't, well then, hey, you just learned a fun little factoid about the Quicksilver. Good for you. Dead Man's Tail now has a correct impact stat display, no actual change to the performance of the gun. Two-Tailed Fox is getting a reworked catalyst. Bungie feels the performance of the weapon was a little bit off, so they changed it to fire the third rocket following the second rocket instead of at the same time as, which helps it lean harder into the Three Tails fantasy. Fair enough, I guess. As long as that third rocket doesn't make it fire any slower, fine by me. With Vergless Curve, the exotic bow, Bungie has fixed an issue where if Whisper of Fissures got the kill, it wouldn't count towards the Hail Barrage stacks. Whisper of Fissures detonations now generate Hail Barrage stacks if the crystal was created by the weapon. Shiver Quiver now activates when slowing enemies, nice, and increased the slow stacks from 40 to 60 when hitting players directly with Hail Barrage arrows. That should allow for a freeze if two Hail Barrage arrows hit the player. Because Verglas is technically a lightweight frame bow under the hood as well, it should also benefit greatly from the earlier mentioned bow changes. TLDR, if you already like the Verglas curve, it's kind of Christmas for you right now. Next up, we got another big ticket item, Le Monarch, which as many people predicted is being shifted to use the same damage profile as a lightweight bow in season 22. So faster draw time, but lower damage output overall. The damage over time burn duration is being shortened from three seconds to 1.75 seconds, moves from eight damage ticks to six, but burn deals the same total damage to players overall. Also, the PVE burn damage is going up by 50%, which is a lot. I'm not jumping for joy on this change to Le Monarch immediately. While the shorter burn duration is going to be mildly less annoying for PVP, it still deals the same amount of burn damage overall, and the bow shoots quicker now, and lightweight bows are going to feel way better in Season 22. On the surface, this seems kind of not like the nerf a lot of players I know were probably hoping for, and more of a lateral move for Le Monarch in PvP. Hard to say without getting my hands on the bow, but early prediction, Le Monarch will not see decreased usage in PvP with these changes. PvE Monarch users, though, rejoice, I guess. Vex Mytho. Bungie admits it has been fairly strong in PvP for a while now, having secretly benefited from a number of perks to auto rifles. With ARs getting another bump to range in Season 22, Bungie felt that Vex was a tad too hot in playtesting. As a result, Rate of Fire has been toned down from 390 to 360 to match other high-impact auto rifles. But for PvE players, better damage on miners and majors by 25%. Whoopee! Tommy's matchbook is getting tweaked so that Scorch is more front-loaded onto the weapon behavior, yay. And Touch of Malice is getting a lot of adjusting. Bungie had originally upped the amount of self-damage that the gun dealt, because there's a lot of ways to heal in D2 when compared to back in D1 when the Touch originally debuted. But Bungie now realizes that was a mistake and are making changes, so get ready, y'all. Increased final round damage in PvE by 20%, decreased the self damage from the final round from 10 to 7. And here's the biggest change. Final round damage will no longer kill the user. It's going to be the same thing as touching a Titan barricade. You'll be brought down to 1 HP repeatedly, but you won't be able to die via self harm through the touch of malice. Increased the health awarded by the touch of mercy perk from 30 to 75. Set up touch of mercy to work like unrelenting, aka guardians and major targets give more points towards activation. The Darkness Ball attack now deals arc damage and will apply the arc blind verb to combatants and stun unstoppable champions. In short, y'all, if you haven't run much King's Fall lately to get that touch of malice, might want to think about firing up LFG. Malfeasance is getting an issue fixed where the Vorpal Weapon Catalyst wasn't displaying the status buff text. And now another one that folks like Cool Guy are going to be mad about, Cloud Strike. They're reducing the lethal kill distance of the Lightning Strike effect against players in PvP. You know what? Good. I'm goddamn tired of going six feet under because my teammate doesn't know how to challenge a lane properly in Trials. As Bungie mentions in the article, if the user is still skilled enough 
good. Let him come 1v1 me and finish me if I'm weak from the lightning. But again, at least give me an option for counterplay if my teammate doesn't know how to protect his neck. Moving on, Wicked Implement. Bungie took a, quote, conservative approach, yeah, no kidding, with the exotic, and now realizes that they need to give it a little bit more love. Timing window for creeping attrition has been increased from 3.5 to 4.5 seconds. Tithing Harvest can now also be activated by destroying stasis crystals, making it gel better with the stasis player kit overall. Finally, Wicked Implement Exotic Catalyst now also includes the Headstone perk. Overall, not bad for Wicked. I don't know if it'll be enough for me to go be a diehard lover of the gun now, but hopefully some people out there enjoy the changes. Now we move on to weapon perk changes. Bipod is getting the overall damage penalty reduced from 40 to 25%, which admittedly will make it a more appealing choice for burst damage situations. Not sure if Bipod will become the overall new PvE meta, but uh, eh, stay tuned, who knows. Envious Assassin, believe it or not, is getting a buff. There will no longer be a time limit after kills within which you have to activate the perk or get another kill. Translation, don't worry about having to swap to your Envious weapon to take advantage of the kill timer, it doesn't exist anymore. That'll make it way easier to overflow the magazine on weapons with Envious Assassin, which is awesome. The perk will now activate even if the mag is overflowed, but will stop activating once you've hit the max mag size of 2.5 times or greater. Enhanced Envious Assassin now provides fractionally more ammo per kill instead of a longer window of time after a kill. Honestly, that all sounds great. Gonna go through my vault and see what I got that has that perk for PvE. Under Over is also getting some much needed love. Bungie is increasing the already existing damage bonus and adding two more, and they hope that the perk can find more of a place in endgame PvE builds, especially for activities that feature Dark Cabal and Lucent Moths. Now provides bonus body shot damage against players with Woven Mail. Nice, I guess. Increased the bonus damage against Combatant Shields deals significantly increased damage to enemies who are enhanced by a Dark Cabal Overshield in addition to enemies shielded by a Lucent Moth. Fair enough, maybe a better, more viable PvE pick for the future. Under Pressure has been a long goaded perk on fusion rifles in PvP with near permanent uptime, aka because you spawn in with only two rounds and that will activate the perk immediately. They're reducing the maximum accuracy bonus a little bit for under pressure, but keeping the full strength of the stability bonus. TLDR, under pressure fusion rifles will be slightly less good in season 22, but probably still good. Shoot to loot. Pairing shoot to loot with perks like explosive payload and kinetic tremors didn't allow the splash damage to interact with orb collecting, so Bungie's done some custom tuning behind the scenes to make that happen. That right there is an awesome change. Go through your vault right now and see if you have any weapon with the perk combo shoot to loot and payload or shoot to loot and kinetic tremors. That'll be an easy way to collect orbs of power in the middle of a gunfight in season 22. They also removed the glitch that allowed shoot to loot to continuously grant ammo to overflowed mags without actually consuming the ammo brick on the ground. Lamau. No longer triggers the reload when shooting a special brick that could not be picked up while also having an overflowed weapon equipped. And explosive damage now interacts with orbs of power, which is great. Legit looking forward to being able to do that in PvE. Valiant Charge. Perk now deactivates after the initial sword swing. Boo earns. Ambush. Apparently there were unintended ways of causing ambush to deactivate. No longer deactivates from healing, fall damage, or being shot by allies. That last one is especially kind of hilarious. Explosive Light fixed a bug where the enhanced version of the perk was granting two stacks of the initial orb pickup. And Chill Clip, which unfortunately a lot of us probably saw coming. It's been kind of a goaded perk for PvE for a while now, allowing players to nail all three champion types with ease. Reduced the slow stacks from 60 to 40, and Wolfpack rounds no longer will trigger the perk. All right, initial thoughts there. It'll still be good, but it'll just take slightly longer to reach full freeze effect in PvE. I wouldn't recommend breaking down that chill clip Riptide just yet. It'll still be a great champion killer probably in season 22. Almost at the end, but now we move on to crafting changes, starting with Bungie admitting that loading into Shirochi to weapon level farm is quote, not ideal. But rather than take that option away from weirdos like me, Bungie wants to buff weapon level progression obtained through more normal methods like activity completions, PvP kills, and 
adding a currency-driven method of directly advancing a weapon's level. Getting some real D1 vibes from that final note there. Because getting kills in PvP is harder than PvE, Bungie is upping the amount of progression earned by ganking Guardians in PvP beginning in Season 22. Somebody tell True Vanguard that, so he comes back to the game. Activity completion progression is also getting boosted across several activity types, including Crucible, Trials, Dares, Wellspring, Gambit, and Platinum score completions of Legend and Master Solo Lost Sectors. They're also adding the capability for progress that exceeds the current level to roll over to the next level. As a result of the upcoming rollover change, weapon leveling through completing activities should see a large overall increase in efficacy, not just limited to the specific activity types they're modifying for Season 22. By the way, did y'all watch my new weapon power level method? That may be getting a buff with this improvement. Nobody tell Bungie in the meantime, and I'll try to see early on in Season 22 just how much better that method becomes. To round out the weapon's progression changes, they're also adding in the capability to directly increase a weapon's level through currency expenditure. Crafted and enhanced weapons will both receive a new mod slot in their weapon details where you can spend glimmer and enhancement cores to directly boost the level of a weapon. The mod will increase the weapon's level directly, leaving your existing progress towards the next level untouched. While there's no cap on how far you can boost a weapon's level to, the cost of boosting will increase relative to the level of the weapon. Side note, I kind of wonder how much it'll increase by and at what point it won't be worthwhile anymore. Overall though, sounds like crafted weapon level boosting is going to be way less painful in Season 22 and beyond. Almost at the end, resonant and harmonic alloys will be deprecated as a required material and will no longer be output as dismantle rewards starting in Season 22. Bungie plans on removing those materials entirely from the game at some point in the future, hallelujah, but until then, your remaining materials can be exchanged for Glimmer from Raoul at the Tower. Finally, Bungie admits that they made obtaining Deep Sight Neo Muna drops really annoying and overly rare, which especially sucks for a lot of people when I spend half my streams gushing about how much I love my crafted round robin. In Season 22, the Neo Muna Weekly Pinnacle Story Mission Score Challenge will provide guaranteed Neo Muna weapon pattern progress the first time you do it each week. The Neo Muna Vendor Engram upgrade will increase the drop chance of Deep Sight Neo Muna weapons. That'll be retroactive if you've already claimed the Vendor upgrade. The Throne World Vendor Engram upgrade will also receive the same behavior for the Throne World Deep Sight weapons, and again, that'll be retroactive. Finally, Season 22 will also include a big fix in the underlying Deep Sight drop system that manifested from the major overhaul Bungie did for Lightfall. The bug could decrease the Deep Sight drop rate as you neared at the completion of a pattern set, good lord. Although the Deep Sight bug on its own would normally have a low impact on Deep Sight behavior, the problem was exacerbated when coupled with the lack of deterministic Deep Sight sources for Neo Muna weapons. GG. Go get those Deep Sight Neo Muna weapons, you crazy, crazy guardians. And we're at the end. A lot of changes overall, some tiny, some pretty big. I know it's a lot to take in, but follow me on Twitch as I plan on streaming a lot when Season 22 goes live and testing out as many of these new changes that I can. Let me know how you feel about these changes down in the comment section. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you on stream.